Issues Impacting Small Farms Today, Unit 3. At this point in the class, I know you're well into reading in Henry's, uh, Henry's Farm book, and I guess just a couple comments that I would uh, like to make as far as that book goes is the fact that operating a small farm is hard work, and I don't want to tell you that it's easy because it's not um, we're we're doing the one acre garden here at the on our college campus and and it just it takes time and effort and and it is hard work but it is very rewarding and I and I just hope um, through this class you can decide if being a small farm owner is something that you really want to do and I hope I can provide you with enough information and enough reading and, and the interviews that you're doing to kind of figure out that system. So the title of the class, Small Farm Viability, and, and my con you know, what makes a small farm viable? And I know that was your, one of your assignments because I want to know what your opinion is. You know, does it have to make a quarter of a million dollars? then that's going to be very difficult and that's not a small farm. Does it have to make a few thousand dollars and provide your family with healthy food all season long? Then that's much easier to accomplish. So, so that's kind of my goal is to try to have you think about that and try to come to a decision on is a small farm something that you want to explore. The things we're going to talk about in this unit is the government policy, the rural economy that's dying, the amount of welfare people that's getting uh, free food from uh, food stamps, and the difficulties of getting local grown food into schools and hospitals and other large state-run organizations. The USDA is an agency that promotes the large farms and they have for a long time and I think that um, that continues as I'm working on the curriculum for this class the new the new farm bill is just getting uh, is being worked on and I'll be curious to see um, what happens uh, with the farm bill as far as as far as the small food industry goes it's currently providing the safety net for uh, the livestock farmers, or excuse me, the green farmers, but not really for livestock or vegetable farmers. So we've, we're picking out one segment of the farm population and using tax dollars to support those. And uh, part of that is the large corporations that are, are spending money on, on lobby. And, and the small farm has a hard time lobbying against Monsanto and Dow Chemical and and Cargill and ADM and, and those large, large com companies. And, um, and oil is still an important component for agriculture production. We talk a lot, I teach in a small rural uh, district, community college district, and we talk about um, the declining rural economy in the small towns and, and what's happening to rural America. At this point, uh, mo the majority of the farmland is not owned by the farmer and so that leads to a lot of land being rented and that causes uh, lack of security from the farmer perspective because you never know who's going to, if you're going to get to farm that land next year if the granddaughter that owns the land lives in Chicago and somebody is willing to pay her uh, 15 or 20 or 25 dollars more an acre she very much can pull the farm out from under you and you'll no longer be able to farm it. So I think from a stewardship perspective, that leads to farmers not providing as much stewardship as they should. The other thing is the rural kids go away to college and they don't come back to their home area because there's not a lot of good paying jobs. So they go away to the university and they get their four-year degree and when it comes time to find a good job 
they're going to look towards um, more of a populated area than their small town. And, and we just see the declining population in all the high schools in our area. And so who's staying in the rural economy is the older people. So it's becoming a population of, of people that needs a lot of service, a lot of health care, and that is another thing that's, that's declining in the rural economy. So a big concern uh, from the agriculture side is the dying rural economy. And I think the small farm movement can make some of these small towns appealing again and give the opportunity for people to come in and start a farm business in some of these rural areas because of the, the cheap uh, small acreages of land that are available to start a small farm. The welfare food dollar and that program continues uh, to expand at a, at a very rapid rate. We have approximately 47 million people receiving government assistance for, for buying food, which equates to $80 billion. And so a large part of the USDA budget goes to welfare, welfare food dollars. And so if the government is giving these recipients money to buy food, can the government start mandating a percentage of that to be spent on local food? This would do two things. It would provide those people with a much more healthy diet and healthy food system. And that would in turn support the local economy and the small farm that's raising some of that food. And I think this is a very viable option to expand the local grown food system. We have a market that is being run and funded by the government as well with the schools and the hospitals as a very big user of food and a very big provider of food for the population. And, and the same thing with the free and reduced lunches at the school. We're providing them uh, a product for free so why aren't we in encouraging those entities to buy local product? And a couple of reasons that I believe, um, lack of training and certification, and the cafeteria food is not really food, <laughs> maybe we could say. It's opening a can and dumping it into something to heat it up and putting it on the plate and everything's prepackaged and, and there's really uh, not much cooking going on in the kitchen. Probably we could say the same thing about the home as well as the school. And then the large volume that's required. The Chicago public school system recently announced that they would like to buy two, two million broiler chickens. Well, that would be very difficult to raise those locally without the normal confinement system that we come to expect from the poultry industry. So several, a great opportunity and a great market. It's just a lot of logistics that's going to have to be worked out if that's going to be a viable market for our small farms. And so what can you do? What can small farms do? By providing a food product for the local economy you're keeping the, the food dollar in the local con economy. When a consumer purchases food at the grocery store, 19 cents out of every dollar goes to the farmer. But when you buy the food directly from the farmer, then just about the whole dollar goes to the farmer. If we start eating more local fresh produce, I think that could have an impact on the health in the community. It can provide jo jobs for young people in the rural areas and opportunities for them to come back to the farm and decrease our dependence on foreign oil for food production. So a win-win situation from several different avenues, but it's gonna take some, some time to develop the system that's gonna provide 
that much local grown food.